Party. Family, good afternoon to those watching us online in Barbados and in the diaspora. I speak to you this evening on a matter I think is of grave importance for this country and for our children and for our parents. I believe I can speak for all Barbadians when I say that we've never seen a minister and a ministry of education under any administration in this country that has allowed something as alarming and as brazen as the Inter-American Development Bank science tests to occur. I know the first thing that everyone says about Barbadians is that we are passive people and that is underestimated. The Barbadian spirit is underestimated. The Barbadian spirit to want to protect or defend our children is underestimated. Did the government and the Inter-American Development Bank just think that Barbadians, especially parents, would let this go? As a parent, an educator, a researcher, and a Bajan, I am aggrieved by this situation. If we do not make a stand for our children, what and who can we make a stand for? The computer tests, which was not really a test, if computer test, if we were honest, and it was an undercover and illegitimate operation to amass data, especially relating to sexuality and to the race and other social dynamic issues of our children. What was the objective of the survey? Why all the secrecy? What was the real reason for the test? Where was the data going? Who was going to use this data? At what point did the Inter-American Development Bank assume that they had the opportunity to circumvent all who oppose and issue a test of this kind without parental consent? The Miamonti administration has recently borrowed $40 million from the Inter-American Development Bank for education. We want to know what was the issuing of the test and was it connected to this loan? Is the Inter-American Development Bank now the captain of a ship in terms of our education of our children? Because from what I've heard, the minister claims to have opposed many of the questions, but yet the test was still there. We know that the Inter-American Development Bank cannot invite itself into our educational institutions. They had to be authorized. Who authorized this? Importantly, who signed off on the Inter-American Development Bank agreement to test our children? And very importantly, when did the Prime Minister know about this situation? But we've all been told the story, this so-called science test. We've seen apologies flying from every corner of the government, the Prime Minister in particular, the Chief Education Officer, but we have not heard from the substantive minister as yet. Is Ms. McConney still in hiding? When do we expect to hear from the substantive minister? If we are very clear, under the law, under the Education Act, the functions of the Minister of Education are to promote the education of the people of Barbados and to establish and develop institutions for that purpose. Effectively, the minister has to contribute under the Education Act to the spiritual, moral, mental, physical, social, cultural, and economic development of the community and of Barbadians. Therefore, it is the duty of the minister to safeguard our children and to provide a sound and stable education for them. The minister appears to have failed in that duty. And again, on behalf of all Barbadians and all parents, I call on the minister to answer us, to be held accountable to us. If the minister is not accountable to us, who is the minister accountable to? And furthermore, the onus must also be on the Prime Minister to demand that the Minister come out and speak to Barbadians. Now, I saw that the Prime Minister wants to set up an ethics review committee to ensure what? Another committee? How many committees do we have? We had a committee for the NIS, we had a committee for the tourism slogan, we had a BERT review committee, we had a digitization of the port committee, we had an advisory committee on food prices, we have an advisory committee on an advisory committee. When will this stop? The Prime Minister constantly finds time to send direct messages to world leaders and parade on the international stage trying to solve international problems, but cannot make time to issue an urgent statement concerning our children 
and their future. It is most disheartening given that the Prime Minister was once the Minister of Education and also the Minister of Youth and would understand the urgency of this matter and would understand that it demands a direct response from the Minister of Education. Moreover, the law. Where is the law in this? We know, it is clear, that the admission of this test broke the Data Protection Act, it broke the Ministry of Education, the Education Act, and it also broke all ethical standards for review. This is not a matter to push aside likely as some small mistake. This is a very, very, very serious matter. And we have to handle it and address it in the seriousness it deserves. A society does not function without law and order and discipline. And the government may not be accustomed to law and order and discipline. And if they're not, we, the people of Barbados, will demand that there be law, order and discipline. Our children are important to us and they will not be run Russia over by this government, by the Inter-American Development Bank, by any organization. Furthermore, we have more questions than answers. We still do not know who authorized the test. We do not know how the test came into Barbados. Code.org has issued a statement denying that it was their test. The IDB has issued an apology. The government has still not said what is the purpose of this test and how this test is connected to the Inter-American Development Bank loan or how this test is connected to the future of education in Barbados. So this situation is a serious situation. It is not a simple, let a lesson be learned and we walk on by. Often Barbadians are deemed to have seven day wonder issues and next week the idea is that we're gonna forget about this and we're gonna be on to something else. Let us not, let us show that that is not a case for now because this is too important. This is our children. The government has overstepped. The IADB has overstepped. The prime minister has overstepped. It is time that we demand action. It is time that we stand up for our little ones. It is time that we protect them because if the government will not protect them, we will have to do it ourselves. Now I can invite questions from the media. Uh, basically, um, we have been talking about this issue for the last Hi, good afternoon, Paul from Monty from News. Uh, Dr. Yeo, we have been talking about this issue uh, mm -hmm. for the last uh, about uh, three, four days. Yes. Um, we were done on uh, Dr. Brastad's yesterday, mm -hmm. where you pretty much made a similar call. Mm -hmm. um, basically, from from a from an action oriented perspective, mm -hmm. should your calls go unheeded for the ministers to, to, to come out and say this uh, 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 and uh, give you the answers? Is, are there any further steps that the Democratic Labour Party is prepared to go mm -hmm. to, to get the answers and uh, what you deem as justice uh, for our nation's so? I think the Democratic Labour Party is prepared to support uh, any sort of organized action in terms of marches or strikes. If it takes that we have to picket the Ministry of Education every day until the minister takes responsibility for this, then we are prepared to support that. If there are parents groups out there, we will stand with them, we will stand with the parents because this is not a Democratic Labour Party issue. We are reflecting the views of our membership, we're reflecting the views of the country. We are here to provide leadership as possible, but we are also here to stand in arms with the brothers and sisters of this country and the parents who are also aggrieved by this action. It is ridiculous at this point that we are hounding and literally every parent in this country is asking the minister to respond. And you have a minister who has been elected by the people of this country and is failing to do a simple task to come and have a conversation to explain what is the purpose of this test. Upwards to now, we still do not understand what was the purpose of the test, what's going to happen to the data, who was responsible for dropping the ball on this. And it doesn't even matter at the point who specifically in the ministry was responsible. We know under our system, the minister has to take 
final responsibility and accountability. We saw the Prime Minister try to deflect for her friend and done so poorly, and therefore we are not letting this issue die. I want to issue a call to all parents. This cannot be one of those seven-day wonders. We have to keep on it until the Minister speaks. If that demands every day, we call the Ministry, we send emails, we write. If you have to picket the Ministry every morning, eventually she will have to talk to us because this is becoming ridiculous. Four days before this is an entire week and still not a word from the substantive minister about this and still no clarity on the test or what they're going to do going forward. We saw a weak, poor response from the minister, from the prime minister about ethics review committee. Anyone who's involved in research knows that Barbados has an institutional review board where all these types of surveys have to go under. There is no need for any more committee. The committee is a divergent tactic and we call it such. The Prime Minister needs to stand up, demand her minister do her job, and that would also require the Prime Minister to do her job. Um, also, if I may ask you to put on your, your hat as a, a, a law lecturer at mm -hmm. this point, um, what type of legal jeopardy do you, do you see uh, the current uh, Ministry of Education, IDB, uh, facing and, 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 and my association, taxpayers and public? Well, 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 firstly, we can, we can go to the Education Act to realize that the Minister has failed in her duties and the general functions of what the Minister of Education is supposed to do under Section 3 of that Act. We can then go to the Data Protection Act to realize under Section 8, the Minister has also um, uh, failed and the Minister has also failed in terms of permissions needed to uh, survey minors. So, uh, in terms of the legal ramifications, we know that it is hard to sue international organizations because they're immune from suit. We saw something very similar to the, C for the CXC. That immunity obviously does not necessarily extend to the government. And if parents are willing to pursue, I have seen uh, legal advocates put it out there that parents should uh, look at pursuing legal action depending on what uh, they felt aggrieved in terms of whether their child was psychologically damaged, whether there were other instances of, of trauma that has been ex uh, exhibited upon children. The reality in the bottom line is children were harmed in this process and I think we cannot get away from that. This cannot be a simple, oh, it was just a test. And I think the government's approach to this is really, really disappointing and disrespectful towards Barbadians to treat this as just one little incident. It's not. Children were harmed and it, this, this has to be rectified in a way that is satisfied, satisfiable to parents. It is not what the minister feels is a satisfactory answer or not what one of the surrogates of the government comes out and tells you they are satisfied. What does your satisfaction have to do with it? Parents need to be satisfied and it has to be done properly. If you go into the Ministry of Education Act, there's actually a part of the Act which makes it clear that uh, you know, the education system has to take account of the views of parents. So the, 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 there is legal grounds for parents to stand on and, and my advice would be to them would be to seek legal advice and move from there as appropriate. This cannot rest, this cannot lie. Something has to happen. The Prime Minister and the Minister need to come and answer this, especially the Minister. If the Prime Minister um, is, is in control of her cabinet and in control of her minister, she can compel her to do this. That is how our system works. Obviously, there doesn't seem to be that, that relationship, that situation, because the minister is not here. Yet the Prime Minister was providing appropriate cover uh, yesterday at a press conference, announcing a committee, thinking that we're going to let this go away. But it will not. It is not going away. Yeah. Um, if I may switch gears mm -hmm. quickly before I pass the mic to anyone else who want to ask a question. Um, you, you just recently had a decision handed down um, uh, against uh, one of the persons that ran on the Democratic Party's platform. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much from a party perspective, uh, how does the party intend to respond uh, to Mr. Bob's suspension um, in this regard? The, the party supports Mr. Bob fully. Um, I've said this before and I'm going to repeat it again. The current laws that uh, prohibit uh, civil servants from being engaged in political activity are archaic. It, it is wrong what the government has done. Uh, I, I was trying to hold back from calling it as I see it, but given where we are, this is a witch hunt. Let us be clear. 
This is a brazen um, uh, witch hunt. It is wrong what they've done. They're trampling the rights of a uh, citizen who can and should be able to hold themselves for elected office. Uh, Mr. Bab has done nothing wrong but wanting to serve his country and be a representative for your country. And he is being punished for it. And he should not have been punished. Furthermore, we know that there were other folks on the campaign. Why has no action been pursued against them? But you have singled out Mr. Bab and, um, and, 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 and Pedro for punishment. It is wrong. And we call on all the authorities involved. We call on the president to use her offices as necessary to, uh, to, to address this issue and to bring closure to this. You cannot have individuals hanging on for the last uh, six months. And obviously, they'll be hanging on for another three months. And if this case has to go all the way to the Caribbean Court of Justice, we will support Mr. Bab all the way with all of our technical and legal expertise and what else is needed to ensure that there's a resolution on his side. The law is on his side because there have been other cases in the Caribbean where such um, archaic laws regarding uh, the fact that civil servants should not be involved in um, elective politics have been uh, put aside. And the same should have been done here. Furthermore, the minister and the chief education officer should not have pursued this. Uh, you know, these are one of the, the situations where they should have let common sense contend. Obviously, their common sense did not contend. There was nothing to pursue here. They should not have done this. They should have realized that other folks were involved, put this aside, recognize that the laws are archaic. And until we can change the law, decide, you know what, let common sense, leave this one alone. Um, the government's quick to change laws and to rectify other situations. Why can't they come in and, and, and simply change the law on this one? Because it is wrong. It keeps people and good people out from politics. And we got, and you know, as I said before, our new politics needs new talent. It needs new people. We need the skills of all Barbadians to contain. Uh, um, until members of the media got their thoughts. This, does this support that you speak of for Mr. Bob and, and Mr. Dan, Mr. Shepard? Um, does it translate beyond moral support? I mean, what type of kind of support has? No, as I said, we would give them the legal expertise, the party. The party is uh, fully equipped with uh, the relevant um, senior consuls and uh, other academics and other lawyers that can help and guide uh, Mr. Bob. Uh, within his case as he requires. Mr. Bab will also have his own counsel and his own advice, but he knows full well that we are here uh, for him and we support him all the way. We will not let him walk alone. We will not leave him by the side because that is not what this party is about. Thank you. I will hand over to my uh, chairperson on education to offer some comments as well to the media. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, one and all. Thanks again for being here. We, we all know the reason we are here today, and that reason is we have questions. We still have questions because there are a number of unanswered questions. And one of the questions that I have and questions that parents have been putting to me up to this morning, my phone rang. And someone said to me, I need you to find out. And what did they need me to find out? Was this test given before? And the question to that, the answer to that, I wouldn't want to say because it's speculation, but the parent assured me that this test was given last term. So why hasn't the ministry addressed this if this test was given before? They have said they're going to take back those from the five schools that it was given to, but what about the others? What are the ramifications of that test and where are those results? And if so, if it was given, which schools was it given to? Is the ministry aware that in order to severe students, there must be parental consent? And as you're we we hearing all over the radio and everywhere and just like the president just, just said, yes, that is also needed. And why is the minister distancing herself? I mean, everyone is calling for the minister to me the issue here is we need to hear from you. Why are you not here? Why are you not answering the call to speak to parents, to speak to guardians, to address this issue head on? Just grab the bull by the horn and address the issue. I find that this minister actually, I think that she should 
we should change the name from the Minister of Education to the Minister of Positivity. Because at the end of the day, once it's a positive matter, you always hear from the minister, you always see her. Let's talk about school meals. Let's talk about these beautiful lunches that we're all going to get. Then you will find the minister, but on issues of national concern, the minister is distancing herself. And the question is, why are you distancing yourself? Now, the minister, again, I think she needs to voice her concern on all these issues. She needs to reassure the children. She needs to reassure the parents. And she needs to rebuild that trust that we need to have. We need that protection. Her job is to protect our students and to protect our educational system. And she's not doing that. Children has been harmed. They have been harmed. And again, we need where's that common sense of decency that should be exhibited today. I, I, have we lost our decency? The PM says that she has accepted the apology given by the IDB. But again, is it her? Is it for her to accept? It is not for her to accept, it's for the parents to accept, it's for the students to accept, it's for our Barbadians to accept. And we need to know why should they accept this. Now my question again to goes back to this IDB loan. I've asked months ago concerning this Inter-American Development Bank loan, $40 million, and I'm trying to figure out, does this loan have other attachments to it? Is there a fine writing that says, because you're accepting our loan, then this is what we need to do for you. If that is the case, just tell us. Tell us. You're borrowing all this money, but for what purpose? Is it going to harm us at the end of the day? If it is, then why are we doing it? Now, there are a number of issues that are also left unaddressed. We have issues in schools. I got a phone call up to last week telling me that there's one particular secondary school in Barbados that is in a complete state of disrepair. Nine classrooms have been condemned. The teachers are upset. I mean, we need to address these issues again. Rats in the canteen. We have windows that are falling off, doors that are dropping off, roofs that are caving in. And all of this weeks after the reopening of school. Why? Again, where is the Minister of Education? What is the Ministry of Education doing? What are we doing with all these reports? So we need to address these issues and have all of these concerns aired. So that is the reason we're here today. We're here to see what answers we can get. So please answer us. Let parents know. Talk to our teachers. Let them know because again, we shut them out. This test was done. The teachers were asked to leave. Again, we are telling our teachers, we don't need you. We are the ministry, we are in charge. So we are taking whatever we want to do. We are just doing it and we don't need you. We don't need your input. So please just come out, address these issues and answer all these questions. And that's all we are asking because our children, they're our future. We need to make sure we take care of them. Please, let's do that. And that's it for me. Thank you. Yes. Uh, if I may ask one, one final question. Certainly. Um, no, being devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister, the leader of Barbados, mm -hmm. has spoken on the issue. Um, the, so therefore, and the Ministry has issued a statement. Therefore, one may ask, why is there a pressing need for the substantive, the substantive minister to address an issue that the Prime Minister herself has already addressed? Well, well, well first thing, first thing, Carvel, you're not being a devil's advocate, it's actually a very good question, because uh, the, the first thing is the Prime Minister has not addressed the issue. Uh, that is why we're here, uh, telling, telling us that, that she's accepted the apology from the IADB. What does that have to do with parents who are still concerned? What does have the teachers that are still concerned? Her acceptance of the apology does not matter to us at this particular point. What we need to understand is what went on, where the failings were, and the, the fact the minister needs to take responsibility. Unless you're trying to tell me that the prime minister runs all the other ministries by herself, 
because then th th that's what we accepted. That can't be the case. The minister has a job to do. The minister should do it. The prime minister's word and doesn't provide the last word. She's not the minister of education. The minister of education, Kay McCartney, is the one responsible. Let her face the fire. If she can't face the fire, get out the kitchen. It's that simple. You know, the, the, the reality is, uh, you know, Miss Motley, for all her skills, uh, this is not your job. You, uh, and, 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 and then the other question, if you are interjecting, that tells me that maybe you knew something about it. Well, that even makes the matter worse because when did the prime minister know about the test? Did the cabinet know about this? Was it involved or attached to the loan? Because something this big must have gone to cabinet. Did the entire cabinet know about this? What, what actually went on with this? And this is, this is the reality here. And the more that they stay silent and then the drip drabs of information, we're piecing a story together that does not spell well for competence. Because as this court, and I've said this already, there is a competence issue at the heart of this government. There's a competence issue with the minister and there's a general competence issue. We see it in housing, we see it in roads, we see it in tourism, we see it in everything. Everything, there's some kind of apology, oh, we can't get that done, oh, we can't get that done, that wasn't done properly. Well, then if you're unable to do your job, the good and the honest thing to do is step aside and let somebody else do your job. What we have here from the Minister of Education is a demonstration of incompetence. I, I, you know, there's no way to dress this up. And, and you know, Barbadians have this thing uh, about being Sunday polite. Um, you know, you know the minister, she's trying her best. No, she's not trying her best. She just can't do the job. And you know, you know it, maybe in any other situation, we could do Sunday polite. But when it comes to your children, no, there's no time for the Sunday polite. Sunday polite put aside and we deal with anybody who is a threat or who poses a threat to our children. You know, I take this personally, as I said, if this was my son, let me tell you something, right? <laughs> Somebody, somebody somewhere, then we've got somebody somewhere, I would be coming for them. Because there is no way that I would sit down and allow this to happen to my kid. And the reality is, what they've done, and Melissa has spoken about this, they have stolen an opportunity from parents. There's something personal about this as well. You have taken away the dignity from parents who wanted to talk to their children about the, these issues. Who wanted the appropriate time in their space to introduce these issues to their kids and say you know what let's have a conversation about this you have destroyed something sacred to a parent any parent watching this know what i'm talking about because we have milestones of parents we have the first birthday the second birthday we have the preschool moment we have the first date we have that conversation that we have with our kids about the birds and the bees you have different you have stolen it from them you have destroyed something very sacred and very important to parents. And you have to take responsibility for that. Trying to brush this off as, oh, the IADB gave an apology. You know, and it was even a proper, signed by who? A faceless corporate organization, international agency. There was no personalness that, who in the IADB issued that apology? The director, the president, the board, who? Are we supposed to accept something like that? Is that what we've come to? Where is the respect for Barbadians and for our children? zero respect and then you're going to hold a, not even a press conference related to it at the back of another press conference oh yeah, yeah, yeah i accept the idb apology we are forming an ethics review committee nothing to see here go home no 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 on any other issue maybe but when it comes to our kids no this is not happening and until someone in that government especially the minister of education gets up from her office face the fire if you're good enough to face the fire during elections and go and beg for votes and knock on doors and go to parties and be seen and when they got school meals and school repairs and the opening of a school talk about lentils you gotta be good enough to answer for this question it can't it can't be and i've seen i've seen commentary to the view that you know it's not a big deal the questions ain't that bad these are things that we do we are to discuss them. no that's not the issue the issue at its core here is that you've done something that's broken the law so there's a legal issue you've broken the law you've broken something sacred and moral so that's two issues there's a legal issue there's a moral issue and then you're not being accountable as you should be as a minister which means if we tell you come and face me your job is to put on your clothes but not your shirt and say yes barbadian public i am here 
What do you want to know? That is your job. That is what you're put there for. Your job is not to send a boy on the radio to defend you. Your job is not to send the chief education officer on the radio to defend you. I did not elect the chief education officer, and I sure nobody voted for the boy that you sent on the radio to, to, to think for you. And when I last said, the Prime Minister, Mia Motley, is not the Minister of Education. She wants was, and if she wants to revert to that ministry, fine. But until that point, we want to hear from Kay McConney. It's that simple. This is not, this is not hard, you know. This is nothing hard. Real, real, real simple. And we can make this real easy or we can make this real hard. It's up to them, you know. Because I am a parent, I'm not letting this go. I don't know about the other parents watching. And I will tell you, do not let this go. Because you know what? They expect us to do Sunday polite. They expect us to go back to our homes, grumble behind our curtains, send a thousand WhatsApps, sit on our hands, and everybody goes home hunky-dory as if nothing has happened. Some ethics committee. And what is more insulting, you come and you set up an ethics committee that we do not need. There's already a process for this kind of thing. That means that they didn't even put it through the process. That's even worse. We think about, this gets worse and worse every time you think about it. Because we don't need an ethics review committee to stop this from happening. There's already procedures in place. And if the Prime Minister or the Minister had taken the time to understand how research or anything beyond their nose works, then they would know that. It's that simple. So this, this, isn't, a, this isn't a small issue. This is not a small issue. And all they're doing is calling on what the parents are asking for. Yeah. The parents out there, the persons who are saying, we want to hear from the minister. So hmm. all we're doing is answering that call for them and asking the minister also to answer that call. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there's a point you need to elaborate on. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, um, I don't know if it's just anecdotal evidence that you have, you, you, you asked a question about whether this test was administered before. Yeah. Um, do you have... Uh, are you getting from some credible sources that I have, this was this I have parents, before? I have parents that have called me to say that their child has taken this test last term. And that, that, that even makes the situation worse. How long has this been going on? So then was it really a mistake? I don't know. I don't know. So it begs to ask, like I said, it, it keeps getting worse and worse. It's getting wider and wider. The pothole is getting deeper and deeper. And furthermore, I understand that the government and the minister in particular may have been warned not to do this test. So other folks saw it and said, you don't do this, don't, you, 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 you do not do this. So, so really, we just seem to be in a situation of cover and lies and spin. And we just want to know the truth. That's all, that's all parents want. They just want to know the truth. They want to know how this is gonna be fixed going forward and who is taking responsibility for this and what sanctions will be put on the person that needs to take ultimate responsibility. And we know in our system that lies with the minister. That's just how our system works. If you don't like how the system works, change the constitution. If you, if you think that something is wrong, but for now, the minister. It's the buck stops at the minister. How, 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 look, you know, anybody who understands how schools work, you know that the ministry will issue directives um, and it is up to principals and the boards to carry out those directives. If you look at the Education Act, it is clear. There's a clear line of hierarchy um, from the minister to the boards to the principals and the principals are, are carrying out their, their, their jobs. Obviously, it was clear that once the test was being administered, it, it seems that some principals were very uncomfortable with it and they expressed their discomfort. But the reality is, this is part of, of, of the ministry. Uh, this is their responsibility. Uh, and there seems to be some other of the breakdown in communication or, or mismanagement or incompetence on the whole part of the, the, the system. But that is coming from the head. When we just looked at it, we've just talked about the fact that we have reports from one school that city the roof is about to cave in, classrooms have been closed. We've got a situation where um, two of our um, teachers and especially um, master coach Bab are being hounded for just doing what their, their, their political rights allow them to do. You have the test here. Last year you had the, the bad behavior app. There just seems to be a trend. They, you know, let, let's put it this way. The, the minister and at this moment, it just seems to be what I call omni shambles. I don't, I don't know, you, 
you're just waiting tomorrow and say, what else is going to go wrong under Kay McConnell? Like, what, what, else, what else can we see? Because at this moment, nothing seems to be working. What's happening with the education reform? If you want to widen this discussion, where is the report on education reform we were promised? Has anybody seen it? Is that also hiding and missing like Ms. McConney? What else is going on? What is happening with the alleged reports coming from these schools? Where one school, you know what's nine classrooms uh, allegedly being closed in a classroom and the roof is about to fall in? Where did, how did children and learn? And you just, you just had um, schools starting late for, for repairs. Did you, did you miss the fact that a roof is about to fall in? I, 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 don't, I don't understand how you can miss it. What is go so, so, so there obviously is an issue of competence. And it comes down to the fact that Ms. McConney is obviously out of her depth. And if she is, maybe she should be replaced. And that's up to the Prime Minister to decide. So now we can shift the onus on the Prime Minister to also do her job. I would tell you what I would do if, if it was my minister, for sure. Because she definitely won't have a job on Monday morning. It is that simple. But that's me. And that's what's called leadership. And that's what I expect. You should do your job. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you for coming out on your, uh, this beautiful Saturday evening. Um, I want to thank the um, folks at home and online who are watching with us. Um, as I said, we will continue to press for this issue. This is not a Democratic Labour Party issue, as Melissa said. We are getting the calls from parents. We are basically amplifying and giving voice to their voice. Um, and we have the platform as a party, and this is what political parties do. This is not about us. It is about the parents. It's about the children. It's about protecting them from further harm. It's about ensuring that they get redressed for current harm. And we will continue to do so. We will continue to put pressure um, as, as long as it takes, really. That, that's what this is about. So, and I ask you, all the parents at home, to join us. Uh, do not let this be some seven-day wonder. This is uh, about your children. Uh, we can see that there's a pattern of incompetence in the, uh, the, in the ministers and uh, in the execution of her job. And we want to ensure that there's answers and we want uh, her to assure us somehow that this won't happen again. And if she fails to give that assurance, then it would be up to the prime minister to, um, as they say, a prime minister can appoint and a prime minister can disappoint. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.